Hello, and in today's video we're going to talk about Sigil and Shadow, a new role-playing game by Osprey Games. I haven't uh, heard too much about this, um, but I believe it's a D100 rule system based on a fantasy role-playing game uh, rule system that came out a few years ago. And this is sort of a Call of Cthulhu, Esoterrorist, Delta Green sort of um, setting. And as you can see, it's a role-playing game of urban fantasy and occult horror. And being Osprey Games, it's got some really good production quality. Um, the font, I find a little bit small, but not too bad. It's got some nice evocative artwork, and we've got the dark parallel universe. And as it says here, the D100 light system, bare bones fantasy and covert ops. So uh, I haven't seen too many reviews or um, info about, as I say, this particular version of the rules. Um, but there does seem to be a little bit out there for bare bones fantasy. So you might be able to check that out to get an alternative opinion. Now, the actual basics of the game seem pretty good. So you roll your D100 and you're trying to beat a... Uh, target number and I believe you're trying to get as high as possible um, but still be under the score. Doubles are crucial results, either crucial failures or crucial um, you know, fumbles. Uh, you get advantage and disadvantage and you might have to roll 2d or 4d10 as well um, and there's also d5. Now most of the results are rounded down but obviously rolling a d5 is slightly different to that. So you've got a success value, so that's what you're trying to roll. And you do an action check, and you try and roll under that. So the actual basics are fairly simple, I guess, but I find this rule set does start getting a bit more crunchy and complicated. Now, one thing I, I do like is you've got a nice character creation section here. But what I don't like, it talks about you, you can either be an illuminated or a shadowed court person. However, the game seems to be really focused on illuminated, and during play you can become corrupted and become a member of the Shadow Court. So really, I think everything to do with the Shadow Court should be taken out and pushed to later on in the book where it has a special section on it. I, I don't really think it should be in necessarily here, but that's just nitpicking at the end of the day. So you determine your background, you check for an oddity that makes you, I guess, unique. You then have your stats, which seems to be shared across the system. So strength, dex, log, and will. And they all start at 40%, and then you can get advancements. Or alternatively, if that's all getting a bit mathy, uh, you can just get an array of numbers of 60, 55, 50, and 45, and you just assign them to your four abilities. You then get a damage bonus for your strength or dex, depending on whether you're doing melee or ranged attack. You become trained, which gives you a plus 0% bonus, but you can improve that. And uh, at level one, for example, you get a plus 10% bonus. So my understanding of the rules is you get your ability score, you add your skill bonus, and then that's your uh, target number that you're trying to roll under. Uh, you get perks and powers. You then get some extra little bits and pieces. So uh, your castings, I guess, are sort of like your class. Um, so, you know, if you're an illuminated person, um, you get a load of benefits, which are detailed here. So um, you can force the guy to re-roll, uh, allow an ally to re-roll. Um, but, you know, you can't get all of these. You have to spend something called bones to, to get this. So um, the various castings of the illuminated are the seeker. So looking for information. The hunter, so monster slayer. The protector, so protecting the innocent. The keeper, you know, like an archivist, I guess. You know, as you can see here, guy, he's got a little demon in a jar. And each one has its own drive. So, for example, conspiracy drive for the keeper. Then it does talk about the shadow, but it also mentions that you should see um, the shadow section later. And as I say, this is the bit that should go off over into there. So you've got the afflicted, the devoted, the host, and the ravenous. Um, so that would be like your vampire werewolf, I guess. Uh, you can then roll your background and your oddities, or you can select them if you prefer. So, you know, you could be a blue-collar person who's a seventh child, for example. Then, depending on your background, um, you've got various bits. So, for example, if you're an athlete, you will have a lifestyle rating of lower middle class 2, and you'll have the perks of fast on your feet, athletic. And then you can either uh, choose to place athletic with tough as nails and there's 
load of stuff there. Then for your oddities, uh, I mentioned the seventh child, so folklore and magic exist in this world, and the seventh child is specifically charmed in a way that makes them especially adept at using gifts. A character with this oddity gains one extra gift when they take the first level of mysticism skill. This can be held on to to unlock later, should they not take mysticism at character creation. So it gives you a little bonus of being a mystic. Um, so it then talks a bit about what the abilities do. Your damage bonus, so if you've got a strength or dex of 60 or more, you get plus one, and then obviously plus two, etc., all the way up to an impressive plus eight. We've then got skills. Um, now, there are only 10 skills in this, so unlike a lot of D100 systems, it, it's fairly limited, but you know, you can tweak them, I guess. So you've got Arcana, Combat, Education, Investigation, Larceny, Medicine, Mysticism, Social, Survival, and Technical. And uh, the levels, as it says here, gives you bonuses. You've then got focus field. So, for example, when you take, uh, let's say, medicine, you might have to actually specialize. So it then gives you a breakdown. So arcana, combat, education. Uh, we talked about medicine. So here you go. A bit here. So um, this skill represents uh, field, surgery, etc. So a medic pack or facility will give you... Um, potentially the ability to heal people up. Mysticism is um, sort of like sixth sense. Arcana, I believe, is the spell casting uh, bit. We then got your perks. So athletics, for example, plus five to dex or strength. Choose when you take the perk. Then um, we've got some special powers with some descriptors. So you've got a positive and a negative. So you can be born to lead, but have an abrasive personality, for example. Um, so you've then got some derived traits, so your health points, which is half your strength. So um, that's like effectively like your wounds. Initiative, damage resistance, so how much you resist um, damage. So it, let's say you take 12 damage with a damage resistance of two, you actually only take 10 uh, health point damage. And then rank um, is for advancements, and it's a bit like levels. Um, you've also got a bone pile, which are things you can spend uh, for in-game effects. You've then got your lifestyle and equipment, so lower middle class. You're either renting a decent house or condo, you're paying a mortgage, and you can afford decent furnishings, some nice appliances, but, you know, you're not super wealthy. You've then got various equipment, weapons and armour, vehicles, then you get into your character advancement. So um, at rank one, you'll have no milestones. You'll have a skill maximum of one and a bone pile maximum of five. However, by the time you get to, let's say rank four, you would have had 12 milestones. You'd have four skill manifestations and a maximum bone pile of six. So when you advance, you get these various awards. Then we get into playing the game. And as I say, this starts off fairly basic, but starts getting really crunchy. So if you've got advantage or disadvantage, um, you know, you basically have to roll your two dice, but you can pick how you want them with advantage. With disadvantage, you have to pick the worst option. Um, using bones, resistance checks, success modifiers, so you can increase or decrease the success value of the roll. Um, bit about time. We then got extended tasks which I always find uh, a nice feature of role playing games but they often oh, are a bit complex and often aren't really worth the bother in my opinion. Um, taking time on tasks, long term tasks, teamwork, combat scenes. So um, in combat scenes you've got to keep track of time and initiative a bit more. Uh, then you've got various combat actions so you know free actions, multi actions, moving, attacking and this all starts making the game much more complex so you've got difficult uh, movements so that might make things harder to do you've then got your attack damage your damage resistance and hardening so you know modifying the damage taken then you get some injuries how are you going to get healed then some special effects so um, you know you, you might find some weapons do things so for example like a fireball 40% range, long range, it's got the effect of burst and close uh, once per encounter and you resist it via decks, i.e. you try and sort of like roll out the way I guess. 
Uh, you've then got various conditions you can get, so you can be dazed, fatigued, frightened. Then you've got 10 tasks, uh, contested tasks. So if you're racing someone, if you're chasing someone, obviously vehicles, who's driving, how's it do, how much damage can the car take. So as you can see, there is quite a lot of crunch in here. And I must admit, I, I found the crunch particularly hard to get my head around and I'm still processing it at the moment. Then we've got the Historica. So it gives you a little bit about how the cosmos works in this game. Um, you then got mysticism, so you've got talking about sixth sense, befuddle, clairvoyance, claims, all, all these various special powers. Uh, we then get a load of information about the shadowed, and I think all the information about the shadow should be in here personally. So let's flip through all that. So you then got some burdens that you can have, and then how you become shadowed other various aspects, more nice artwork. artwork. Then we get into um, the modern magic, and this is kind of an interesting section. It's got a nice little pyramid in a second, I believe. Yeah, here it is, so the inverted pyramid. So you start off with the catalyst and you go up into whether you want to invoke it or channel it, then do you want to project it, charge it, bind it, and then do you want to shape it, attract it, reveal it, or enhance it. I kind of like this idea. Um, but it's something I struggled with with my own rule set is where you've got the flavour and the rules, and the flavour's interesting, but how do you make it into a nice, easy-to-understand rules? And I think it's done a fairly good balance in, in here. So... Um, it talks about how you've got your effects. So do you want to shape or mend it, attract or repel it, reveal or obscure it, enhance or inhibit it? Um, how do you then want to use it? So do you want to project it, bind it or charge it? And then are you going to invoke it or channel it? And then this all gets grades and difficulty. So low magic effects are hard, mid magic very hard, high magic improbable. And as you can see, minus 40 on the difficulty. So that makes it really difficult to get that casted. And then that's going to affect the difficulty, your casting time, how long it's going to work. And you tend to use basically elemental magic, so Aero, Aqua, Geo, and Pyro, so your classic Earth, Fire, Earth, etc. And then you've got Umbra and Vita, which I guess are light and dark. Um, so I, I like this bit, but as I say, I, I found this quite hard read, and I'm not sure I've still quite got it. Um, then, of course, um, we've got some more information about using technology with magic, because obviously this is set in the now. And uh, there's lots of really nice information. There's a nice little cheat sheet there, which is quite nice. And then we've got some sample spells, thankfully. So, Blast Reward is an aero spell that's mid-level, and it's a bind repel. So, um, you use a little item, so Feather, for example, and uh, you name those who are forbidden and who are welcome and basically it, the people who are welcome I guess are the bind and the people who are not welcome are the repel so yeah I, I can sort of see how this is very flavorful and can work quite nice but it could cause um, trouble for people new to the game trying to get behind it then we get into some um, NPCs and they've got a very simple um, sort of breakdown Strange encounters, so slightly more mystical creatures, so the Tower Sentinel very much a sort of old one. Then visage creation, so very powerful, almost godlike um, entities, and there's a big table and descriptors of that. Then it talks about um, creating your interest in tabletop experience. Quick and dirty setting creation, that's really cool. Nice little table there that you can roll on. So, descriptors. Then, this is really cool this um, five factors feuding. So, you design, you know, who's one, two, three, four, and five, and you create them on this table here. So, that's pretty good. Uh, then, a nice bit about creating your adventure. And then, we get a sample adventure, some tips for how to play it, and then some little appendices with some various uh, little tweaks to the rule set. And that's pretty much it. Uh, now it's hard for me to talk about this because I'm still personally processing it and I've found recently I've, I've been really struggling reading um, some of these role-playing games and I think 
what it is is uh, there is a tension between a lightweight rule system and then a heavyweight crunch. Now this tries to do a bit of both. The actual basics are really simple. Roll D100, roll under a target number. Simple. It then starts adding all sorts of crunch. And, and these days I find that crunch is unnecessary burdens. Uh, I also find that the font, as I say, is quite small because, you know, this is a half A4, so an A5 sort of size with small text. And I'm finding that you know, makes it hard for my eyes to, to read and, and kind of glean the text and get it into my brain. So is this a good rule set? Well, I think it is. Um, it's based on a successful set of rules that have been used in at least two other, uh, possibly three other rule sets. Uh, it comes in a beautiful hardback book and it's a very interesting setting. Now the problem for me is, is it going to challenge, for example, modern day Call of Cthulhu in the form of like Delta Green? Is it going to challenge uh, Esoteris, which is the gumshoe system? And I'm not sure. I like the fact it's using the D100. Um, the D100 is a great system, but that really does put it up against Call of Cthulhu. However, it's a sort of all-in-one book for a reasonable price. Um, but it's in a very crowded market. As I said, I've already mentioned Call of Cthulhu and uh, Esoteris, but there's also Liminal and possibly Tales from the Loop could also maybe uh, be in this sphere. So it's in a very crowded market and it'd be interesting to see how this does. Personally, uh, I love it for the setting and for some of the ideas. Whether I'm going to run it rules as written, maybe not. I, I will probably either go with Esoteris or uh, my own sort of rule set that I'm sort of working away at. Um, but I will at some stage try and get this run rules as written. And um, I think it's a great product. It's worth it for the setting and for some of the cool ideas. And the rule set looks pretty good. Um, uh, it's full of flavor, definitely. Uh, and I think for a decent price, uh, this is well worth uh, picking up. Now in the UK, it officially retails for £25. You should be able to get it for a bit cheaper than that. Will you like it? Well, hopefully I've shown you enough to want to find out a bit more about it. Um, obviously, once I've been able to run this a few times and really got my head around uh, the rules, I, I might come back to it and give it another uh, little video run through. But um, for now, I thought, you know, there's not much out there about this. Let's get this video out there. And hopefully there's been enough there for you to be intrigued and maybe go out and check out Osprey's uh, website. They do have a couple of downloads available there now to help support the product. And I believe there is an adventure uh, that should hopefully be in the works and published as a PDF. So let's hope that um, comes to fruition. And um, in the meantime, happy gaming. <laughs>